Welcome back to Dublin. It's well known that the Irish ethnic heritage in Boston is deep-seated. What's overlooked, however, is the fact that there's also a very special relationship between Boston and Ireland on ice. The Irish American Hockey Association has been working hard, supporting and promoting youth hockey here for the last five years. Hockey in Ireland is in its infancy, especially the youth programs. That fact led John Cusick and former Boston Bruin P.J. Stock to form the association in 05, to share the game they love with those in the land of their families and ancestors. Yeah, and do whatever we can. You know, we, we bring guys over here. We had the Boston Bruins alumni come over for a week last year. We were in camps all week while we were here for the youth in Ireland. But as importantly, we have the kids come over two, three times a year, and they spend a full week each time they come over. And as I mentioned before, they're on the ice twice a day. We have a 50-minute skill session and we have a scrimmage with local teams. In previous years, the trips to the U.S. for the Irish kids seemed like a bonus. Now it seems like it's becoming a necessity. Why? Because the only permanent rink in the Republic of Ireland, in Dundalk, has closed. We hoped after we closed to get reopened straight away and get back onto our programs and get back um, just after the summer, but it still hasn't happened yet. And um, it's the only ice we have in the country, so leagues and uh, figure skating programs and everything is just at a total full stop now at the moment. The decision to close wasn't so much a profit loss matter. Demand was high and the building was state of the art. The problems involved a partnership breakup, some personal politics, and associated lease issues. No lease, no hockey rink. At least not in Dundalk for now. Kinsella has already scoped out alternatives, including a natural fit near the National Aquatic Center and Sports Campus outside of Dublin. We've already established there's a great interest in this sport in Ireland, and to have it at this location would be fantastic. We've a lot of people in the area who want to start playing the game. We've, um, we've had rinks at Christmas, temporary rinks, um, so there's a great demand for the sport. It's a young population around here. We've a lot of people in this area and the greater Dublin area who would take advantage of, of this facility. Some of the kids who frequented the rink in Dundalk now head north and skate in Belfast, in the country of Northern Ireland, officially part of Great Britain. Other kids have simply dropped their puck. I, uh, I'm not doing really much now, just the Gaelic in, up in Dowdles Hill and like, playing a bit of soccer out in the street and yeah, just a bit of hockey mess about in the driveway. Having to give up hockey shouldn't be an alternative. Although in the grand scale of things here, there aren't that many players, the participation numbers were on the rise. And the kids that are hooked, just like kids in Detroit or Boston or Winnipeg, are completely hooked. It's, it's really cool being a goalie in Ireland because uh, not much goalies come from Ireland. And uh, I just think it's really cool. Uh, it's a lot more fast paced, it's a lot more violent, and I like that. Uh, basically, most other sports, because you, you play them a lot slower, you don't get as much of an adrenaline rush as you would play in ice hockey. So that's sort of what I'm looking for. That's why I like the sport so much. I love the fact that I get to make new friends and I love just going on the ice. It's just so much fun. And I think that I love hockey the most is because once I started skating, I was just thinking, this is the sport for me. It's absolutely brilliant. I just thought, wow. I uh, normally play football in school, but after playing ice hockey, I hate football because all footballs do is dive if you flick them, and ice hockey you take big hits, and then you get back up and go on the play. So, it's a man's sport. Amen. It's a tough man's sport, but an equal opportunity one. We all got involved in hockey, just come up skating a couple of times, and then watched the Giants play, and, and just started off, learned to play, and then built himself up. Better playing with the boys anyway. Roller play with guys instead of the girls' teams. More competition. As for the hockey parents here, the concerns are the same as anywhere else once introduced to the sport. It's rough and it can be expensive. Aside from her accent, Rosemary Coleman and her story could be from anywhere. And then he said to me, I want to start playing ice hockey. And I said, no way. You're definitely not playing ice hockey. Um, it's far too dangerous, banging, shoving, because there was a lot of the Belfast Giants have been playing. So I'd seen a few games, but I thought, that's too dangerous because he does, he, he plays a lot of sports, he plays football and Gaelic. So I said, that's enough. And he said, no, please let me. So at that time, the rink had a lot of gear, you know, that they were given to the kids if they wanted to try it out. And so eventually then he went on to it and he said, no, and they said to me, he has got something. Why don't you let him play? So at that then I did. I remember buying the uh, gear and I said to him, if I pay all this money for the gear, you better go to training. And her son, Sean, has gone to training religiously and it's paid off. For cynics or scouts, bottom liners who might think, 
Who cares if they love it and work hard? There's no talent over there. Think again. Sean and some of those other young Irish athletes have naturally taken to the game. Yeah, I was just um, in school and one of, the, one of my friends asked me if I wanted to come one day and I went and then, well, I didn't really like it and then I came again a few months later and I stayed ever since and that was three and a half years ago maybe. Some of the people in the rink I was friends with already and they just helped me doing drills and stuff and teaching me how to skate and stopping and I start like starting and stopping and I just kept learning how to go faster and faster every time I went on the ice. When it was over last March, uh, we had a few high school hockey coaches that were doing some on ice instruction with us and they were completely blown away that he's 14 years old, what an accomplished skater he is, what a, what a skillful player he is at the age of 14. So he, you might see him in Boston or in New England sometime in the very near future. And there are others following in his footsteps. Potential exists with support. Two things need to happen. Reopen a rink and continue to get fundraising support from across the pond. Every year we have the Irish American Ice Hockey Classic. This will be our fifth year. Um, five separate divisions. We have anywhere between 450 and 500 guys that come in from across the U.S., from across Canada. We've had a couple teams over from Ireland in the past. And uh, it's a great St. Patrick's Day weekend. It's four days and there's five different skill divisions. We have one division that's made up of uh, all ex-NHL players. We have a college division, and it's just a great way to um, have guys get together from, from across the world, and it's every year on St. Patrick's Day in Boston. Hockey as one big family. In this case, one big Irish family. When in Dublin, the crew of Emerald Ice stayed at the beautiful Port Marnock Hotel and Golf Links, where the only thing overlooked is the sea. Welcome back in Belfast, and it's time for a little history lesson. We're not gonna get into any specific incidents. Let's just say that the Irish to the south and the British subjects here in Northern Ireland haven't necessarily gotten along that well over the years or decades or centuries. It's been serious business. Bloodshed, bombings, the Irish Republican Army representing the Catholics, the British military and police and militants of their own representing the Protestants. Throughout the 20th century, this city was ablaze, a literal war zone. But in 1998, a peace accord was struck. And for the most part, it's been quiet since. And how do you develop a lasting peace? You develop it with the kids. How do you get children who are natural rivals or natural arch enemies together? In the case of Northern Ireland, part of it begins at the hockey rink. It's great because it gets uh, people from both sides of the community together. And uh, since hockey's like a, a team, uh, team effort, it's, it's uh, building relations between uh, the two communities. Ross O'Driscoll was born in Cork, Ireland and moved to South Boston when he was eight years old. He's back, and he's the alternate captain for the Irish national team. Not a single person from the north I have an issue with. I mean, I'm from Cork. I'm from as south as you can get. It's never been an issue from day one. Open arms, and everyone's been great. It's everyone on the team just wants to play hockey. Everyone wants to win, and, you know, it, it wasn't us. It wasn't them. It's over with, you know? I mean, that's the way I look at it, and that's the way a lot of them look at it. And now with the recent closing of the rink in Dundalk, more Catholic players from the south are looking to skate north. To see kids on the ice, different colors, different creeds, different religions, etc., etc., it doesn't matter to them, which is brilliant. They're playing uh, <clears throat> Catholic Protestants, playing together. Uh, and it's great for the, for the likes of our generation who grew up in the times where now we are faced with the parents of these kids but ice hockey, like probably any other sport, you forget about it. These kids, it, it doesn't matter what colour or what religion they are. They're just, they're friends and, and, and ice hockey has brought them together. I mean, I think the Giants say in the land of Giants, everybody's equal. That's the way it should be. That's the way all sports should be, you know, in Northern Ireland and in the South of Ireland. Unfortunately, it's not in some cases. Ice hockey just seems to be different. It just has tapped into something that, you know, isn't in other sports. On a drive to the Dundonald rink in Belfast, one might still see remnants of the sectarian violence, and in a few neighborhoods, actual propaganda, some historical, some provocative. But these days, it's very limited, and in fact, former IRA members, among others, give tours of these areas. Once inside the rink, nothing doing. The antithesis of prejudice prevails, and the momentum is growing. 
Hockey in, in Northern Ireland and down south has brought the kids together. Relatively, my kids and their kids are getting on really, really well. There is, there is no religious division anymore in hockey. It's probably one of the only sports in this country that does have no religious division. The European Union started this program, uh, a peace program they call it, Peace 3. It, it, it went through three or four different stages. We, we, we got in on Peace 3, where they actually made funds available to encourage cross-border community cooperation. So the last season we got in on it and we got a great funding from them and we set up a, a, a cross-border committee to organise training, games and uh, away trips for the kids, you know. So basically we had a, a, a training session in Dundalk one week, we had a training session in the north another week, then we'd have a, a, a game between Belfast and ourselves and then we'd have a game with the kids mixed, Belfast and Dundalk together on both teams, you know. And it, it's terrific, and there's been terrific friendships formed out of it, you know. Yeah. It has broken down barriers. I'm always glad to see them come down to the rink, and they're glad to see me. I don't really care about religions or anything like that. I just think if they're a bud, they're a bud. Hockey? The impetus for world peace? Well, that might be asking a bit much. But it takes a village, and why not a village full of pucks? More emerald ice back in Belfast in just a bit. Yeah!